Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. On behalf of Nancy Zeman Productions and PBS Wisconsin, thank you for joining us for this special educational presentation. Please add your questions for the presenter in the chat and stay tuned for a Q&A after the lecture. Then be sure to explore everything else the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show has to offer, including beautiful quilt exhibits and an interactive vendor mall. Thank you and enjoy. Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. Thank you for joining us for the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show Virtual Edition. And I'm Dana Casey. Welcome to our SOA Celebration Lecture. Although we're not together in person, we're imagining you're right here on the set of Stitches Sisters with us, and we're excited to share our quick and easy projects to piece and quilt for the holidays, including table runners, home decor, baking accessories, and more. Join us for our fun presentation and trunk show of projects to piece and quilt for the holidays. We'll start sewing for the holidays with our patriotic quarter square table runner by effortlessly cutting, marking, and stitching quarter square triangles without ever cutting a triangle. We'll start by selecting our fabrics and we've selected the Land of Liberty Fat Quarter Pack. It's all coordinating, it's by Mind's Eye for Riley Blake Designs and it's such fun red, white and blue fabrics that make a great quarter square table runner. It's a beautiful collection. Mm -hmm. So head to the ironing board and starch and press your fabrics and get them ready for the cutting process. The next thing we'll do is cut our pieces. So we'll need to cut our pieces. And we'll start by cutting our crosswise fabric strips. And we have a little board here to share with you the step-by-step -step easy techniques for cutting strips and then subcutting into squares. Mm -hmm. And we're using the No Hassle Triangles Ruler. The No Hassle Triangle Ruler is great for making quilt blocks, half squares, and quarter square triangles. And we're making quarter square triangles for our patriotic table topper. I think they look like pinwheels they sure when do. they're sewn together. <laughs> so that's why we chose that design for a patriotic uh, table runner. And we know that we wanna make four inch quilt blocks. That's our pattern. Mm -hmm. Our pattern tells you, and it's all in the pattern and it's on the nancyzeman.com slash blog, all this information too. So we're starting by cutting four inch blocks. But to make four inch, Quarter square blocks, we can't cut four inch fabric mm -hmm. squares. We follow the blue measurements on the ruler for making four inch or four and a half inch quarter square quilt blocks. And it tells us right there to line it up with the guide for those four and a half inch blocks. And you just have to look in a book or find it right. uh, another way. What size do we cut our squares to make quarter squares? Well, not anymore. No. It's all right here. Mm -hmm. So to make four and a half inch quarter square quilt blocks, we're cutting five and a quarter inch strips. So you just crosswise cut your fabric strips and then you turn the ruler and you subcut into five and a quarter inch squares. My favorite feature of this ruler is the color coding. I'm fond of color coding. Mm -hmm. I do it in many things we do. And mm -hmm. here it just, if you want squares, you do the green and half squares, purple, and then teal is the quarter right. square. It's all color coded for mm -hmm. you. And it's, it's all compact right here. You don't have to find a reference to tell you what size right. squares to cut. So after we cut our strip, our strip of, we are using fat quarters. So mm -hmm. you could cut an entire crosswise fabric strip or just cut up your fat quarters. And then we're cutting them into the blocks, the squares for our blocks. And the next step is to use our No Hassle Triangles gauge. Mm -hmm. The gauge is designed for the same purpose. The gauge shows the measurements for half square and quarter square mm -hmm. quilt blocks. So we just line it up, depress the button and slide it to the four and a half inch quarter square triangle block. And then we trace. We trace down the center of the gauge and we mark. But that's not our stitching line, that's a cutting line. But we don't want to cut the blocks apart until after they're stitched. So we use that center marked line and we align our quarter inch quilting foot to that line and we stitch. We stitch on each side of that marked line. And then we do some cutting. 
at the rotary mat or with the scissors, we cut that block apart and that makes two blocks. So when you open that, you have two blocks. Okay. And you have a pair of blocks. The next step would be to align the blocks together and we're showing it here, right down here. And to make quarter square quilt blocks, mm -hmm. we align the dark fabric to the light and the light to the dark. And we do the same thing. We bring back the no hassle triangles gauge and we do some marking. We lay that on the diagonal and we mark. We mark that quarter square quilt block and you can slide the gauge to that quarter square block for four and a half inch quarter square mm -hmm. blocks. Align that, you know your blocks are the right size then if you're aligned in the gauge. Mark that center line and then stitch with the sewing machine on each side of that center marked line. And when you cut this apart, down that center marked line, you have two quarter square quilt blocks. And then we need to sew our quilt blocks into strata. Yes. So on the table runner, you'll see that we've sewn four blocks in the center. Here, we'll open it up. Okay. On the table, sewn table runner, you'll see that we have a center fabric that we've mm -hmm. cut, and that's just a half yard of fabric and we share the dimensions uh, on the blog and on the website, but it's 16 and a half by 32, 32 and, and a half. half. We have it memorized. <laughs> and it's four blocks here and 10 blocks on each side. And we'll show you how we seam those blocks together. Here's a row of four and a row of four. You make two of those. Mm -hmm. And you can turn the blocks however you'd like. We like to rotate the red and the blue and the, uh, just make an opposing uh, pair. Right. Really, there's no rules. You no. can seam together, all the fabrics go mm -hmm. together. It's a convenient fat quarter pack. You can sew your collection together however you'd like and make, uh, I believe there's 28 I believe in so. this table runner. And here are two rows of 10, two rows of four, mm -hmm. and then we stitch. We stitch this to the center of the table runner, that navy blue star center yes. piece. And then once that's stitched together, we look at the finished table runner and you can see that the four pack has been stitched to the center mm -hmm. on each end and then you sew the long in place. And all that information is included in the pattern and at the blog site, right. as well as some quilt finishing techniques. Next up, we're stitching our Love Letters table runner with modified quarter square triangle quilt blocks. To stitch our Valentine's Love Letters table runner with modified quarter square triangles, we'll start by selecting our fabrics. And we've selected a pretty Valentine uh, pink and red and mm -hmm. white collection by Riley Blake Designs. And we, of course, went to head to the ironing board and spray starch your fabrics and get them all ready for the cutting process. But we wanted to showcase with our Valentine's uh, table runner the quarter square triangle. And you can see the quarter square triangle kind of looks like an envelope. It does. I mean, this, these are turned on their side. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on how you look at the block, they look like little letters or little envelopes. That's why we wanted to highlight that in this new table runner. And this uses four and a half inch quilt blocks or four inch quilt blocks when they're sewn into the table runner. And we make all of our quilt blocks with the no hassle triangles gauge and ruler. So we'll, I'll bring the fabric board sure. over and we'll pull the table runner out and we'll show that we first cut crosswise fabric strips. And we're using fat quarters again. We love fat quarters, the we collections do. go together so nicely. The fabrics in each collection are just uh, mm -hmm. uh, fail proof. You, the fabrics look beautiful together. And we've just chosen a red, a white, and a pink. And we need to cut crosswise fabric strips. And the ruler tells us, right on the ruler, it states that if we want to make a four and a half inch half square triangles, we need to cut four and seven eighths inch, inch strips. For making our modified quarter square triangles, we'll need to, to make a couple different blocks. A modified quarter square triangle is actually half half square and half quarter square. So it's a combination of two blocks, but it's still super easy to make. We need to cut two different widths of crosswise fabric strips for this project. Because the red fabric is only a half square triangle, okay. we slide the ruler up and we cut four and a half inch half square blocks. So okay. we cut our strips and we turn the ruler and subcut them 
into quilt blocks. Okay. We also have two other fabrics as part of the quilt block. Mm -hmm. And the pink and the white are cut slightly wider. There's one extra seam when we start sewing our block together. That means this strata has to be a little bit larger. So we slide the ruler into place and we cut crosswise fabric strips that are five and a quarter inches wide and then subcut them into blocks. Okay. Again, it's due to the extra seam, but there's no need to remember, it's all here for you. So once we subcut into blocks, we cut our fabric squares and then we place them right sides together. Mm -hmm. And we like to place the light color fabric on top and then we bring our no hassle triangles gauge into place and we do a little marking and we mark, we slide the gauge to that five and a half inch half square marking and we mark, we mark down the center of the gauge and again, that's our cutting line, that's not a stitching line. So don't cut it apart yet again. Head to the sewing machine and stitch. Stitch along each side of that marked line mm -hmm. and it creates two half squares. And once you cut that apart, here are the two half squares. Okay. Just easy half square triangles. Mm -hmm. And there's no stretching on the bias because we left the block complete. Those fabric blocks were together until we stitched them. Mm -hmm. And once we cut them apart, it's easy breezy. There's no stretching. And we like to press. We press as we go. Press your seams towards the dark side. And we like to use the wool pressing mat. We sure do. It's a nice uh, tool to use right on your ironing board and with the steam of your iron, the heat of your iron, and then set those seams with a tailor's clapper. Yes, one of my very favorite tools. Mm -hmm. It's it's mm -hmm. a great pairing. Right, mm -hmm. our sister Denise likes to call it the quilter's clapper. She does. It sets the, the seam, it pulls a little bit moisture out when you're mm -hmm. pressing, and your blocks are always nice and straight and uh, perfect in your quilt. Yes. The next step would be to add an element to it. So to make it a modified quarter square, we take this half square triangle mm -hmm. and we add that red fabric square. And we again mark. We mark that diagonal line. And this one you wanna be careful with so that you make sure, double check your block, that you're marking it the right way. And Dana is, she's putting it diagonally opposite of that seam, yes. right? And then you'd mark. You'd mark down the center of that. And that's your cutting line, your future cutting line. And then you'd stitch on each side of that line. And when then you open that up, you have two modified quarter square triangles. And then we need to sew these together. We need to sew these together to make the finished table runner. Yes. So we'll bring back the finished table runner. And it's so easy, just to make all kinds of assorted blocks, or we call them little envelope blocks because they're little love letters. Mm -hmm. And then we sew, we sew together a strip of four for this end and a strip of four for that end, and then two strips of 10 blocks. So it's just making pairs, stitching pairs together, making your long two rows of 10, mm -hmm. two rows of four, and then stitching them to your center, uh, center quilt panel. This is just a half a yard of fabric that we've cut to 16 and a half by 32. It's super easy to remember, but it's in the pattern. We tell you right. in the pattern exactly how to do that. And also at the blog site, nancyzeman.com slash blog. Next up, we're stitching our Halloween table runner with half square triangle quilt blocks. We'll be stitching our Halloween table runner with half square triangle quilt blocks. We'll start by selecting our fabrics. We've selected a Halloween fat quarter pack and a half yard of coordinating, kind of like a printed Swiss dot mm -hmm. uh, fabric for the center. But we'll head to the ironing board first and we'll spray starch our fabrics and get them all ready for the cutting process. And next up, we'll do some cutting for the squares. We'll be cutting blocks to make into half square triangles. And we call them half square triangles, but we're really cutting blocks. We're cutting square quilt blocks. We start by cutting crosswise fabric strips and we're using our no hassle triangles ruler and we want to make four and a half inch quilt mm -hmm. blocks. So we just slide the ruler up following the green measurements and find, okay, if I wanna make four and a half inch quilt blocks, it tells us to cut four and seven eighths inch strips, which we'll subcut into blocks. So we've cut our strips, turn the ruler and you'll subcut them into squares. We have our two fabrics, we've cut our squares, and we like to place our fabrics right side together. Then we do a little marking, and we like that light colored fabric on top, mm -hmm. and we mark with the no hassle triangles gauge. And we slide 
the guide to that four and a half inch block and it's printed right on mm -hmm. the guide. So just line that up. If we're making four and a half inch half square triangles, slide the guide up, align corner to corner and mark. Do some marking through those die cut openings. And that is our cutting line, our future cutting line. So take it to the sewing machine and stitch your blocks and mark a whole bunch of blocks and stitch them all at the same time and chain piece them together mm -hmm. for ease in piecing. And we're stitching, we're stitching a scant quarter inch on each side of that center marked line. And make sure you engage your dual feet if you have dual feet on your machine. Oh, yes. And attach a quarter inch presser foot if you have it. Mm -hmm. And use those uh, needles, those size 90 uh, machine quilting needles mm -hmm. from piecing to finishing the quilt. It works great for the whole process. And every time I start a new project, I like to start with a brand new needle. Right, good tip. Our mom maybe didn't always do that. I don't think mom so. Mom used to sew until the needle broke. <laughs> we don't do that. We no. change our needle. Change your needle, change your needle with your project. And sometimes I change my needle throughout the project. Mm -hmm. If I've done a project that used a lot of adhesive or spray right. adhesive to layer it together, I'll change to a super non-stick needle in yes. the process too. So use those needles, they're designed for us uh, to make the process easy. So it's a, a great tip. And then we, st after we've stitched down each side of that center marked line, we cut it apart. So using a scissors or a rotary cutting mat, we just cut down the center of that marked line. And we've already done that here. And when you open the block, we now have two, mm -hmm. two half square triangles. And that's it. We use our half square triangles to make that border, but we did some creative turning. We turned our blocks and arranged them into a sawtooth pattern. And that's the great thing about half square triangles. You can arrange them into different mm -hmm. designs depending on where your lights and darks are. You can arrange like we did, we'll bring back the table runner. We arranged the dark fabric to make a sawtooth border. We had to make it spooky, right? It's a Halloween right. table runner. My favorite. So you'll see that blocks are placed. Uh, on, we turn them until we have that sawtooth border. Mm -hmm. In the corner, it just makes a nice little uh, turn, and then you continue with that jaggedy. Next up, we're stitching Halloween applique coasters. To stitch our Halloween applique coasters, we'll start by using pre-cuts. We're using five inch pre-cut fabric squares. These are just five inch squares, and you can buy these in cute little uh, holiday sets mm -hmm. uh, all for all different seasons, or you can cut your own. Just cut with a square ruler some five inch squares. And for each coaster, we'll need two uh, fabrics for the back, a fabric for the front, and a fabric for the inside back. And I'll show you that in a little bit. We also need two interfacing. We're using two squares of five inch cut interfacing of Pellon Sure Tailor. Mm -hmm. That gives us a little bit of stiffness to our coaster. Sure but not too much stiffness. And we're also using Pellon's Wonder Under. And this is the paperback fusible web that we use when we add the applique designs. But we wanna showcase how we make these quick mm -hmm. and easy coasters because you have the option. You don't have to applique these. You could use decorative stitches or just choose a fun fabric. But what we do is we layer the fabric. We first, we fuse at the ironing board, the interfacing to both the front and the back inside pieces. So that's our first set. And we place them wrong sides together. And you may be thinking, hmm, hmm. what's going to happen with that? But that's, this is the front and this is our back. And we do some folding. We fold. We fold our fabrics. Just fold those squares into rectangles. And we'll show you why we did that. When we turn over the coasters, you'll see, you'll see that the back is purple, the back of this one is orange, this one is black, and they're fun little Halloween uh, characters. Yes. But when you open it, you can see that there's a little opening in the back. And this is our technique so that you can just sew four seams without having to leave an opening for turning. Mm -hmm. So we've aligned our back fabrics, and we're using two different color fabrics on this one. And then we stitch. We stitch down one side and one opposite side. Don't sew all four sides at this point. Okay. So we have this one stitched and we've stitched down each side. I'll turn it the right way here. We've stitched and then we wrap. 
we wrap the next seam. That's why you only stitch opposing seams. Okay. Then we use Nancy's wrap corner method of wrapping that stitched seam towards the unstitched seam and then stitch. Mm. Stitch those two remaining seams. You've caught all four seams within that a stitching line, those right. four stitching lines. The next thing would be to turn it. So we use Clover's point to point turner. Thank you. You're and welcome. we turn. We turn the coaster right side out and you can see why we put the white fabric on the back and the front. Okay. And with the Clover's point to point turner, you can turn this easily right side out and then poke out all your corners. Mm -hmm. So we have four corners because they're square. In this one, we didn't decorate. You could decorate your palette coasters sure. with the applique printable. And that's a free printable at nancyzeman.com. You just search Halloween. Land at our blog site. We have over 290 tutorials. It's probably up near 400 now, but it's we say 290. <laughs> and um, then you can find those printables mm -hmm. and you could decorate. But you'd want to make sure that you use your fusible web and put it to the back of your solid fabric. Sure. And uh, you'd want to embellish your front before you put your back on. Oh, otherwise you would just sew it right shut. Right, <laughs> or you could choose a fun fabric. Mm -hmm. You could choose a fun fabric and um, do no stitching to the front. There's really, it's a low sew project, just four seams, but then you can get as creative, creative as you want mm -hmm. with the decoration. And, and you can stitch your appliques in place with beautiful threads like the isocord polyester embroidery mm -hmm. threads. So many different nice, fun colors. But you can sew for different holidays too. For so sure. we made some for uh, Independence Day or red, white, and blue holidays. These don't have the applique, but we just used decorative stitches mm -hmm. and just randomly stitched on that outside five inch square. And then when you turn it over, you have that opening. And we've multi-purposed that opening. It's not just for ease and turning. It's a pallet coaster for the front because it's a blank palette you can decorate however right. you want. On the back, it's an opening for a wine glass, and you're excited to show I that. I am very excited to show that. So you just put that envelope on the bottom of a wine glass or a juice glass, mm -hmm. and you could also just set your, your glass on top of the coaster as well. Right. And if you're having a Halloween party, you could choose to make different like we did here. Use the backing fabrics as different fabrics, and then you know which glass belongs to which person. Right. And I know that you want to be the purple one. Yes. And I'll be the orange. And our two other sisters can join mm -hmm. in with the green and black. Right. <laughs> Next up, we're stitching our wine tote in Fun Fabric Caddy. To stitch our wine tote caddy, we'll start by selecting fabrics and depending on what holiday or celebration you're mm -hmm. stitching for, just choose two fat quarters or two half yards of coordinating fabric because our wine tote, you can see the inside of the tote from the outside. So it's fun to pick some contrasting fabrics and we're just right. gonna cut simple rectangles. But this isn't just a wine tote. We like to use this for housewarming and then we've tucked a little bit of spaghetti and maybe a little spaghetti some sauce. Special sauce. Oh, look at that. We have our own Sisters Sisters marinara sauce. News to me. Great, I <laughs> love it. <laughs> So you can use this for a housewarming and private label your own spaghetti sauce. <laughs> cute, Dana, very cute. So also handy for a wine tote or a little gift bag. Yeah. It's a great gift bag. I love homemade gifts. Mm -hmm. I love giving them. Mm -hmm. And it, we can make it for any season. We've made it for a patriotic holiday for today. And we really start by cutting easy rectangles. These are just rectangles of fabric. And we cut two rectangles for the inter inner tote or if you want this to be the outer tote for spaghetti mm -hmm. night, it certainly could be. For sure. Uh, we've cut two rectangles and we've backed them with Pellon Sure Taylor interfacing to give it some crispness and so it stands up on its own. Mm -hmm. We also cut two rectangles for the outside of the wine tote. And then we just cut. We cut a little bit of curved edge and just make sure that your shape is all the same. And that curved ed edge makes the handles mm -hmm. on the wine tote. But we start by sewing the back inner lining and the front inner lining together. So I'm just wonder clipping this. And that's the first seam we stitch. We stitch that with a scant quarter inch seam or use the edge of your presser foot. Mm -hmm. This is an easy breezy project. You can just use the width of your presser foot. Just be consistent with all of your seams so your project lines up. So we've stitched that center seam and we do the same thing with the outer wine tote. 
we put that right sides together and we stitch. We stitch that seam, that seam at the top of the wine tote. And we've already stitched it here. The next step would be to place them right sides together. And I've placed the red and on top of the navy and then we stitch those curved seams. So it's flat construction, right. flat construction. Here's that seam we stitched first. Mm -hmm. These will be our second seams that we stitch. So stitch that curved line. And it, traditionally, we'd have to clip a curved line. You'd have to take a scissors and clip, 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 clip every quarter of an inch and cut right. out a notch. We like to use Clover's 45 millimeter rotary cutter and a pinking blade yes. and just flip your rotary mat over when you're using decorative blades and we trim. We trim those seam allowances, pinking the edges, which will make it easy to turn. Yes. We like to use Clover's Clip and Glide Bodkin. It's a bodkin with a clip that grafts onto your fabric and mm -hmm. that won't let go. And it's flexible. It's flexible so we can pull, say, elastic through casing right. or ribbon through or trims through casings. Mm -hmm. But we use it in an unusual way for turning because this is so narrow, we can't pull our hand through no. there. We like to use the clip and glide bodkin. So you just clip it on by the seam allowance in the lower corner and then you feed it through. You feed that through to your stitch it sister and you grasp onto that and you pull that through and you grab on, yep. And it's pulling through and it's coming through that opening. So we've designed it so that's as narrow as you want to go comfortably. Right. But you also like to use the seam stick. I do. I saw you using the seam stick when we were making samples. And you kind of pushed the seam stick through and to help that and through. help guide it. Mm -hmm. When you're doing it by yourself, you're, that's a little bit of extra sure, help. So. Sure, a wooden spoon from the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the kitchen would work too. Yes. Since we're making a festive tote here. So we've, we usually use this for pressing, for pressing seams. Mm -hmm. We're not using it for that today, but we could. Right. Because the next step would be to press. We'd press these seams and get them nice and flat. And you could pre-press them before you turn it right for side sure. out too. Mm -hmm. And do a little pressing at the ironing board and align your seams. So we've aligned the inner wine tote with the outer wine tote, and then we meet. We meet right sides together and align, align those seams. Now you may think that you just stitch, and you could. Mm -hmm. You could stitch this all the way around, all three sides, but we like to do a little bit of a high-end finish. So we align, we align our seams. We align the blue to the blue and the red to the red, and we do a little pinning, and we stitch. We stitch that long seam. Be sure not to stitch the bottom seam. So it, it just naturally wants to lay this way. It does. You stitch those two side seams, stitching the lining to the lining, and the outer fabric to the outer fabric. And when you turn that right side out again, mm -hmm. you'll have a tote that's stitched on those sides. And then the last thing would be to stitch that lower seam. So imagine the, these side seams are stitched and we just stitch that lower seam. And we give gusset tips too. If you wanna put a little gusset yes. into your wine tote, mm -hmm. and we can bring one of the finished ones up. If you want that little gusset, we show you at the blog site. So we just go to nancyzeman.com slash blog and search wine tote and you'll find tutorials and tips on how we made these. And we do like to do a little top stitching too. Mm -hmm. Optional, you can top stitch around the edges. So in here we have a little bit of a Halloween wine and there you have a Valentine one. In the Valentine one we did it a little bit differently. We stitched a dot fabric to a floral fabric mm -hmm. instead of sewing the red to the red, right. it would be red to blue. And then it, it's kind of reversible mm -hmm. and it's just a little bit different tote. But that's that's how easy it is to make our wine totes. And our fan fabric caddy is made the same way. It's a little bit bigger though. You'll recognize that shape. Yes. Instead of sewing the side seam, we inserted a rectangle. Mm -hmm. So we just sewed a rectangle to this and we also have inside dividers in there too. It's a very similar design. Just head over to the blog and search Fun Fabric Caddy. Next, we're stitching our folded fabric hot pad. To stitch our folded fabric hot pads, we'll be cutting simple fabric squares. And to make our hot pad, it's just stacking and folding. Mm -hmm. They're simple squares 
it's uh, 10 inch squares or nine inch squares or well, the ones we're making today are 10 and a half inch squares yes. because we've chose a fabric panel. Mm -hmm. So you can, you have options. We'll be cutting several squares and you can choose, you're the designer. We've chosen four different fabrics to showcase in our 4th of July hot pads, but yes. we're also making some for grilling season. Grilling. So we'll be grilling out uh, and we wanted to make some hot pads to mm -hmm. go with an apron that we made earlier. And we chose a panel. So that determined, the panel determined how big we cut our squares. So we just fussy cut our squares out. And this wasn't so square. It was a little bit rectangular. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. We're going to take the 12 and a half inch square ruler and we're going to cut. We need to cut one fabric square for the front of the pot holder, four for the woven back, and one for the inner back. Mm -hmm. But we need a little insulation in the middle. And we're using Palon's insole fleece. So also cut a square there. So whether it's nine or 10, 10 and a half, cut your squares all the same. And then we stack, we stack layer them. So we've stacked the inner lining fabric mm -hmm. and then the Pellon fleece or the Pellon insole film. And then we put our hot stuff panel. So right now it looks like a traditional hot pad. Sure. If you were to bind this, mm -hmm. you have a hot pad, but we like to do a little stacking. We stack this. And we fold our squares first. We fold our squares into triangles. And then we align our triangles with the edge of the seam. And then you weave them red and black and red and black as you're doing this. And you'll add yours. And then we can just keep adding them and then weave them together. Mm -hmm. And then the last one gets tucked under. Mm -hmm. line the, align the raw edges, and then as long as you have your raw edges aligned, mm -hmm. you can flip these over and get your weave just oh, right. Sure. And on the next one, we have it already woven together. <laughs> Magically, it's woven together. Our layers are stacked. We have our inner fabric, our insole fleece, and our outer fabric, and then we have our triangles woven into place, mm -hmm. and we just wonder clipped. We wonder clipped that together, and we'll be stitching that with Nancy's wrapped corners. Yes. So to make Nancy's wrapped corners, we stitch along each side seam on the right and the left. Don't stitch the top and the bottom yet, because we want to do wrap seams. We like using wrap seams because it makes nice, crisp corners when you turn your pot holder right side out. Right. So we've already stitched the side seams and then we wrap. We wrap that fabric towards the project and we stitch the seam. Mm -hmm. But we have quite a few layers here. And to stitch that successfully, we like to use the big jig. So put that underneath your presser foot as you start stitching. You don't want to uh, have your presser foot at an angle when you start stitching all these layers. Right. You'll kind of stitch in one place and you won't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So put your big jig underneath your presser foot and then stitch those seams. And then you turn. Once the seams are stitched, you turn your pot holder right side out. And with the help of Clover's point-to-point -point turner, we can push, we can push those corners out. And you could do some trimming. There's some bulk in those corners. You could sure. trim out some of those triangles. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll turn this right side out and push out those seams. We're pushing out each corner with Clover's point-to-point -point turner. Do a little fussy folding and make sure your fabric triangles are woven. Mm -hmm. And then we have all your points turned. You turn it over and you have a finished pot holder. And we'll bring our other one back. And you can see once you do a little pressing and fussy folding, you have really nice woven pot holders. Right. And there's no seam to, to leave open and turn. There's no binding to do. Mm -hmm. Just really fast stack and stitch pot holders. Yes. And we wanted to talk about panels a little bit today. Yes. We like to use panels for making aprons, mm -hmm. for holiday projects, for uh, any occasion. There's panels right. for lots of occasions, including aprons and Christmas aprons. So if you're in a hurry to make a holiday a gift or a, you know, to change your decor up for mm -hmm. the holiday. There's so many panels available. So and this nice. is a fun Christmas apron panel with some ribbon candy straps. And the instructions are printed right on the panels. So you can just easily follow that 
and add, say, a coordinating fabric for the back. Mm -hmm. And some interfacing would be nice, too, to give your apron some body, your apron straps. Yes, panels are near and dear to my heart because my very first doll growing up was a panel. Right, Ollie <laughs> was stitched from a Ollie. panel. And, and what you maybe didn't know when you were really young, when mom bought Ollie panels, she bought three or four of them. So as you wore Ollie out, every once in a while, she'd put Ollie in the washing machine and she'd come out brand new. Overnight, like, mom had wow. stitched you a new Ollie mm -hmm. panel. Yep, Ollie the panel doll. It was kind of a raggedy and red, white, and blue. Right, and you when I became an adult and I sewed the last panel, I figured out that she put every one of those panels inside as stuffing. So, so I have from one to like 15. You sewed things. your very last one yep. and then found all of the rest of the Ollie outer fabrics worn out yes. to cheesecloth practically <laughs> on the inside. But fun story about panels. Um, mm -hmm. So you can make wall hangings, easily stitch wall hangings, potholers, all kinds of, of accessories for right. any occasion for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And we like to use the hot stuff barbecue um, for the grilling season to make pot holders and beyond. Next, we're stitching our jelly roll table mat. To stitch our jelly roll table mat, we'll be using two and a half inch pre-cut cotton batting strips. We'll also be using Jerry's jelly roll jig and two and a half inch pre-cut fabric strips. Two and a half inch pre-cuts are so handy, they're mm -hmm. ready to be sewn right into your project. And I know you like to use them for piecing uh, quilt tops. I do. Mm -hmm. I like to make column quilts with my two and a half inch right. pre-cuts. Column quilts are a great mm -hmm. project for two and a half inch pre-cuts. And they make great binding as well. Oh, absolutely. And we're using them with the two and a half inch batting strips for creating a table mat. And this is so fun to sew. You can make one for every occasion and every holiday yes. and all the different fabrics that are available for the different mm -hmm. occasions. And we're just using the two and a half inch batting strips with a two and a half inch pre-cut fabric strip. And we just align those together and then we insert them into Jerry's Jelly Roll Jig. And this is a really handy tool for making the table mat. Oh, yes. And as you feed the fabric and the batting together it, as one through the jig, I like to use some Clover's Wonder Clips mm -hmm. and pin that together, pin those layers together because the first step we need to do is sew. We need to advance the maker as we're attaching clips and stitch. So head to the sewing machine and insert a denim needle. You want a nice denim 90 needle mm -hmm. to stitch through all these layers. And we For show sure. it stitched already in this sample. And I keep this right in my lap with the supplies in baskets next to me. Yes. And it's on the floor and then I'm just doing it continuously. And you just advance the maker and stitch. Stitch that straight line all the way down the entire strip. And this strip would be stitched. The first step is to stitch the entire strip. Depending on what size you want your project, mm -hmm. you just keep adding right. uh, strips together. You'd wanna sew all your two and a half inch fabric strips together as one long strip before starting your project. Mm -hmm. And then stitch the entire length with that straight line stitch. And you can see it here. The next step is to start coiling. And for our table mat, we cut a center circle. And you can just see, we put a layer of batting in there so that it's the same thickness. Mm -hmm. And we have a backing fabric too in the, from another fat quarter from this collection. And we've started with that center circle. We've kind of fussy cut that America saying out of right. the fabric. Mm -hmm. And that gave us a circular center to start from. And then you just start stitching. You start stitching that fabric coil to the outside of that design. Mm -hmm. And you can change your fabrics uh, when you sew your original strip together and just make a really fun table mat. And you can make it for any occasion and in any shape almost. Right. So this one we stitched for Easter and we didn't start with a center fabric piece. We just started by folding the fabric onto itself like this. I've started a red elegance rug. I sold a, sewed an entire uh, pre-cut together yes. and I'm making a rug with this. Mm -hmm. This is as far as I am right now, but we just stitched the two together and then just continue adding around and around and around and around. And it doesn't have to be round. No. You could make oval. So we made it oval for Easter. Or egg-shaped. You said it was egg-shaped, <laughs> and I didn't think about that until but you it's said oval. that. it's oval. Right, so <laughs> they're really fast and really fun to make. And pre-cuts are available mm -hmm. in all kinds of oh colors. Goodness, and yes. 
and seasonal. And this is a nice Christmas one um, that would make a beautiful table mat. So we hope you'll give it a try. Find our quick and easy projects to piece and quilt for the holidays and so much more at nancyzeman.com slash blog. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed our SOA Celebration projects. You'll find patterns, project bundle boxes, and exclusive show specials at shopnzp.com. Deanna Springer. Thank you for joining us for the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show and thank you for tuning in for Peace and Quilt with the Holidays with my sister Dana and myself and I'm happy to have Dana here remote from our studio in Beaver Dam. Hello Dana. Hello Deanna. Good afternoon everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm in the studios of PBS Wisconsin in Madison so we we're doing our first Stitched Sisters remote and I see you have the projects in front of you that we uh, made in our video, and I have some here too. And we have lots of questions rolling in, so I'll get right to the questions. And the first one is from Sharon. Sharon is asking, are you gals really sisters? Like for real sisters from when, when you were little kids? Yes, Sharon, we are. Uh, we were born and raised in Columbus, and our parents are Don and Sharon Woodward. And we have two other sisters, Denise and Diana. So there are four of us, and we're all Ds. And yes, truly, we are uh, sisters. And Sharon is our mother's name. So I'm wondering if that was our mom uh, on Facebook asking if we're truly sisters. Uh, the next question is from Sharon in Detroit. What is the biggest half square you can make with the half square triangles gauge? Dana, you have that in front of you. I have it right here. And the biggest size you could make a finished square is six and a quarter inches. So that's a nice big finished square. It's six and a half, six and a half inch uh, quilt block. So two and a half to six and a half. Mm -hmm. And same with the mm -hmm. ruler. That's no hassle yeah. triangles ruler. You can also make two and a half inch squares to six and a half inch squares too. And they work together or work separately like we showed in our video. And they uh, work so well. All of the information is printed right on the tool. You don't have to go finding a source or look online or guess. It's all handy right here. So great question. Uh, Clovis is asking uh, from Indiana, does the pressing mat give off a smell? And she's talking about our wool mat, Dana. And why don't you go ahead and give that a smell? <laughs> Smells clean and fresh to me. Right. I've never, <laughs> Clovis, I've never uh, smelled anything with uh, the wool pressing mat. Mm -mm. So, Dana, you're sh shaking your head no, too. But um, it pulls the moisture out, the heat. It pulls the heat towards the bottom, and it really sets your block in addition with uh, the... Um, wooden uh, pressing, a uh, little wooden iron that we use too, or the tailor's clapper. Uh, and that's the next question. Fran is asking, what is the wooden tool used for? That's the tailor's clapper. And Dana, tell us what the tailor's clapper is used for. The tailor's clapper does is once you have pressed your seams open 
and flat or to one side. You then place your tailor's clapper on top of the seam. And what that does is it sets the seam. It pulls the moisture and the steam out of your fabric. And then you get a nice crisp seam after you do that. And you do not need to apply a lot of pressure. You just set it on there and it soaks the moisture right out of there. And that's our secret to how we get such uh, crisp, crisp scenes. We've always learned to press and sew, sew and press, press as you go. So uh, mm -hmm. we stick to that and that gives us really professional looking uh, projects. Uh, the next question is from Carol. Is the ruler set up for left-handed use also? It sure is, Carol. You can use either side and then one end is devoted to squares and squaring up. So you can e use either side of the ruler or either edge of the ruler. So it works great for left-handed or right-handed use. Great question. That I have not received that question before. Uh, Dana, a viewer from the Florida Keys is tuning in and asking, where can I find the pattern for the table runner? I love your stuff. Thank you. You can find the pattern for the Patriotic Table Runner, which is the quarter square table runner, at shopnzp.com. And definitely while you're over at shopnzp.com, check out the rest of our show specials. And coming soon, we will have the half square and the modified quarter square patterns as well. And we show how to make those projects in the video, too. You can rewatch the video at quiltshow.com and see how we put those together. Another question is about the needle we're using. What is a nonstick machine needle? Well, Sue, that's a, a super stick nonstick machine needle that we're using from Schmetz, and it has a special coating, a super slick coating. It's probably proprietary, and it keeps adhesives and things from stabilizers, or I like to use it because I use spray uh, batting spray to put my layers together and it just keeps uh, the needle from gumming up and then you can keep stitching without having to worry about that gummy needle. Uh, Dana Doris is asking, I have old sewing machines. I think newer ones have wider zigzags so I don't know if I can make those jelly roll mats and rugs. Dana, why don't you take that? Well, the jelly roll, mat, roll mats and rugs and when I was kind of experimenting with this myself, I used from a narrower zigzag stitch to a wider zigzag stitch. So I was able to use both because I was experimenting with my machine and how it would work. So I've never done something like this before. And the wider worked and the narrower worked as well. And you have an entry level sewing machine, so you didn't have any problems with your narrower zigzag. Great question, Doris. Uh, Fran is asking, can you use more of the Pellon heat resistant stuff instead of more fabric? And I think she's talking about the pot holder. And I did. I tried experimenting with that using more layers, but it got a little too bulky. And trust me, uh, I know you can't feel that pot holder Dana's holding, but it, it's thick. It's thicker than a purchase pot holder. All those layers add up to really add thickness. And, you know, I want a beefy pot holder too, so I tried two layers. Uh, and it was it just gets too thick beyond what we uh, share uh, in the tutorial and that's a tutorial at nancyzeman.com slash blog and just search pot holder and you'll find that so great question uh, Lois is asking from Beaverdam what sewing machine are you using I noticed it has dual feed like a faf that is our new Burnett 77 quilting and sewing machine and it does have dual feed it does. It has a wonderful dual feed, and that's why we like to use it for quilting. And it also has an extension table, so you can really do a lot of projects with your, your quilting techniques. This is a comment from Shelly on YouTube. I love the pot holders, especially I like the tip about how to sew the seam uh, to get a crisp corner. And thank you, Shelly. That's Nancy's wrap corner tip, her wrapped corners. That's what makes those uh, turn and be so crisp. Um, <laughs> Here's another question. Uh, is there an ergonomic rotary cutter? What do we have for rotary cutters, Dana? We have got the Clover 45 millimeter, 20 millimeter and I believe 60 millimeter rotary cutters and it's for left and right hand. So it can go both ways and it's got a nice comfortable grip on it. Mm -hmm. And we've done a lot of cutting and my hands don't tire, so. There's a little bit of, I would say, silicone and it's a wider handle, so it's easy to hang on to. And people mm -hmm. are just having lots of comments. We love your coasters. Uh, 
they're uh, they're saying, "Wow, the sister, Stitched Sisters are so cool," and uh, questions <laughs> about what are you working on next? Well, I'm working on a fall table runner to go with our No Hassle Triangles uh, series of uh, table runners. And I know Dana's working on a larger quilt, but we haven't been able to stitch so much because we are working on our next biggest project that we're announcing today uh, to the audience. We are opening a store in downtown Beaverdam, and we are uh, calling it the Nancy Zeman Sewing Studio. Oh, thank you. There's a rendering of the front of the building. It's at 120, 120 Front Street, and there's the back of the building. It doesn't quite look like that. It's uh, under construction right now and stay tuned. We're so excited to bring classes and a what beautiful retail store back to Beaver Dam. I'm so happy that you were able to join us today, Dana, and show all of the things we've been stitching and working on and how can they uh, connect and find those show, spe show specials with us. You can find all the show specials at shopnzp.com. You can go to the nancyzeman.com forward slash blog and check out many, many tutorials. And you can check out Stitches Sisters on youtube.com, but definitely go to shopnzp.com today, see all our show specials, and definitely give us a call or reach out to us at info at zemanproductions.com if you have any questions. Thanks so much, Dana. Great seeing you, and I'll see you back at the office. Thanks everyone for tuning in today for our fun lecture and be sure to head over to quiltshow.com and take in everything the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show has to offer. Check out the vendor mall and the beautiful quilt exhibits. Enjoy. Thanks again for joining us. This year's educational presentations are made possible with your contributions. Your support helps us offer a free and accessible online experience where we can celebrate our shared love of quilting. Please help PBS Wisconsin bring back the event next year stronger than ever by making a gift today. You can donate on our website or text QUILT to 1-800-236-3636 to make a gift from your phone. Your generosity makes a difference. Thank you.